Greetings. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. Hey, Ben. How are you doing? I'm all right. Uh, took last <laughs> week off. I'm just getting going again. Cool. How about yourself? Yeah, we are we are starting the holiday season. Just starting the holiday season, yeah. Hi, Nikolai. Uh, whoa. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, I haven't seen you or heard from you in a while. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Glad to get joined. Hey, Frederick, did you take off Thank last week? I did. So, how are you all doing? You're also on a mute. Yep. Yeah, I had to mute my second system and join the audio unintentionally. Uh, all right, I'm just trying to see what we can do through the end of the year. Okay. Ben, um, is this your first call to join? No, no, it is my second call. <laughs> second call, all right, okay. So we usually get started at about five after. Um, We'll see how it goes after a holiday week. Who joins? Um, drop no the meeting notes into the Zoom chat. Hi, Oliver. Hi, Taylor. Hi, everyone. Maybe a little slow going this week for some folks. If anyone has a topic they'd like to um, talk about, please add it to the meeting notes. Greetings, Chandon. All right. Well, that's five after. Um, let's see what we have here. So you can add your name to the meeting notes um, and any agenda items. Right now, I don't see anything. Um, 
other than checking our pull request and kind of going through existing items. Does anyone have a topic they'd like to chat about? All right. Um, any best practice ideas? I guess that's a topic, so um, go with that one. I'm going to open the pull request. Um, looks like Jeffrey added one. He's not here today, but I can take a look. And, um, All right. Okay, well, let's jump right in because there's not much here. Looked like Rani had said something. Rani, are you on this call? Let's see. I don't see him. Um, let me come back to this view real quick, see if anyone else. Oh, just conversation. Um, and Bill, Pankai, Pankai also not here today. Okay, I'm not going to go through those yet. Let's first take a look for ourselves. Okay, um, some environments, and we've been hearing this for a while, production systems deny public internet access, um, maybe even to the point of no proxies. So controlling how the applications that are deployed and components that may be part of the platform are deployed and used in the environment is important. Um, partly because uh, around this malicious code. So we have some stuff about supply chain attack and other things that are probably related to this, but uh, this is getting more specific to the air-gapped environments. And there we go. So it, this isn't just service providers, but there's other ones, uh, regulated environments. Probably finance, I bet, would be part of this. Some of their environments may be air-gapped, maybe only accessing internal systems and pulling. All right, a CNF utilizes a cloud-based licensing model. All right, so you have a, a networking application that you deploy and it validates its license um, externally, potentially. I'm not going to go through all of it right now. Let's keep going forward. There we go. So you're using GitOps methodologies with the fence method. So how do you do GitOps and where it's going to be pulling in the different um, parts potentially from other um, Git repositories when you're doing this, all right? And then you have um, SaaS-based services. How do you do this? A third-party cloud for some of the services. Um, so they're talking about VPN into an environment, securing it. I'm going to go over to the comments.
All right. Panka is asking about um, licensing if they're purchased in advance. And Jeffrey, I guess, is saying it's something different. Okay. So the problem is um, around, I think, automation. And having to do that as part of um, if you're ex expanding, I guess if you want to be able to increase the number of systems or deploy new services, then how do you do that dynamically? Um, if you have to purchase in, in advance, that's a problem. If you have to do um, dynamic licensing right then and it's remote that's also problematic so how do we deal with that uh, this will probably have to get updated to communicate some of these things these are user stories so we're talking about problems and then we got to figure out how to solve we're not solving them right now um let's see All right. Question about how do you deal with the repository management when it's remote? I'm not going to um, see. Okay, this is fine. This is just phrasing, which we always have to go through and update what's going to work. There's probably something between centralized registry. This is about, may have been thinking about images, which is one part. Uh, image registry, image repository, I don't know, the naming, but whatever, we can figure that out. questions about how do you, is it fully air gapped? Is that really what I mean? Is it partial? Um, all right. And then Ian is saying, this is saying um, what networks the machines will be able to connect to. So they may have some type of network connectivity to a specific area, but um, nowhere else. This is a probably important com um, comment that Ian makes. So the, there will be network connections, but the idea that a CNF um, won't have control commands, so it won't be able to do modifications as the idea after it's deployed potentially, or make changes to the um, the server or whatever else. So it's a separation of when it has the capability to make changes or not. Um, all right. Let's see, who made it to the call? Anyone else? Uh, da, 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 da. Hey, Victor. All right. Well, does anyone have any comments they want to add to this one around air gapped environments? I am curious as to how the licensing and the air gap systems itself would also work together 
it seems like that may be quite a, um, uh, a gap for lack of a better word. And also, um, it, it's probably important to realize that different groups air gap for different reasons. So if you're air gapping for security in regards to like a SCADA system, you probably don't really care about um, whether the data is actually exfiltrated or not. You're primarily concerned about protecting from active attacks. But if you're air gapping for uh, a, uh, a skiff somewhere like a military style, then that matters, uh, that matters a lot and what information you get in and out. So uh, it would be interesting to see if, um, if we can get some input on what type of systems that they're, they're likely trying to tear gap. We don't have to know the exact systems, but just to know some of the properties there if, uh, if we want to so if we use case properties. What type of systems? Um, the last part kind of cut off for me. Ah, as in, is what like is the use case primarily for like SCADA systems where the information inside of it is really not sensitive, or is their goal to go for air gapped like systems that are going to hold like state secrets and they need to network those systems together? Um, and so, I think in in both. If for this particular use case, I, I'm curious as to what which use case they have in mind out, out of those two, or if there's a, another one that, that, that I'm not thinking of. Thanks for entering. Thoughts, comments from other folks? Specifically uh, about licensing, how are these different from, from, from any other enterprise software? I mean, this is not a unique problem that we, we are facing here. Uh, I mean, it's not something, licensing is not something specific to CNS. It's about any other problem, also updates and, you know, everything. Yeah, I, I think the point that Jeffrey was trying to make in the licensing side was like, is, should it be more like seat style licenses where you buy like a thousand licenses of something and then you divvy them out over time because you have the right to use them? Or are they trying to push towards a different model where they keep track of the usage over time? So they're less concerned about capacity, but they're more concerned about the usage. So if you use 500 of them at a given time, then you get charged for that 500 as opposed to paying for the thousand at all, at all times. So the same way that like you spin up a, a VM in EC2, then you're only paying for the, the time of use as opposed to paying for the possibility, for paying for the, for the quota. So I think Jeffrey's trying to, to work out a, if we can get a best practice around like, let's say more towards a consumption model as opposed to a pre, uh, like a provisioning model. Mm, I see, makes sense. Yeah, and, and these are just best practices. We can't force anyone to do anything anyway. So we could put something up, best practice. We believe that this will have these positive benefits. So uh, it's, it's unlikely that if someone is really really want to go down a certain path that we'd be able to dissuade them. But if someone is on the fence, like, should I go with one path or another, then uh, we, we may persuade people in, in that respect. I think this um, that the comments around the best practice that's kind of 
that into our next thing. If, if there's a best practice that seems applicable from other domains, then we definitely want to just copy it over and say it works here and then say, does it still work here? Yeah, there's no difference. Then we should be adopting those things and pushing them forward. The principle of um, least privilege, which has has many best practices tied into that. We've been looking at that for a while. Are, is there any other made like a high level principle that may contain many best practices that anyone can think of besides the principle of least privilege that would be applicable for um, air gapped environments. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, when we are talking about least privilege, we also usually mention defense in depth. So having mo multiple uh, defensive mechanisms, but, but again, this is a very, very broad principle. Okay, and I don't know, okay, if, if we are talking about something that is already air gapped, uh, we might we might want to say that air gap itself does not solve security problems, um, and there 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 is a need for for in general the good security approach, uh, even with an air gap system. All right. Um, anything else or maybe any other best practice ideas that anyone wants to talk of? And this can be an area for best practices or potentially specific things. Um, we'd love to get some more best practice proposals in place. Uh, we could write up some around, continue with the least privilege ones. There's a lot of different things that we've uh, talked about for least privilege and security related one. We have a whole set of uh, documentation around that. So that's definitely an area that can be continued. It's, I'm not gonna go down, but there's links down in here that goes to the least privilege docs um, and a, a whole set of best practices. And then there's other security related ones. So happy to have any of those, especially if we can talk about the user stories that are related to them, any testing that's out there or um, pointing at stuff that may be already happening in the cloud native and Kubernetes community. But if there's uh, other things, I'd like to hear them, ideas, areas, Taylor, are you looking for something which is like, um, you know, ideas around uh, high level ideas or something like we could say that how to set up uh, RBUC in a cluster, um, how to, what kind of co uh, configurations to use, what kind of uh, a part, best practices of how to protecting, uh, you know, Kubernetes secrets and stuff like that or more general ideas because, you know, uh, this privilege is a very, very abstract, you know, thing. Um, but if we want to be more specific, you know, I, I have ideas, okay, what, what could we write here? Uh, we're looking for 
I guess more a uh, more specific focused best practice where we say we we can give someone a suggestion this idea this when you're coming across and you're you're wanting to look at you're developing a CNF and you're looking at guidelines trying to follow um, the best way to do deployments and provide your services and everything else what are things that you should do so one of them that we've put forward was um, containers shouldn't execute their processes as a root so this is one of the best practice if you think like 12 factor apps and um, other things like that you can go out there and and look at here's a, a big set of guidelines things that in general you should do or you shouldn't do so this is a shouldn't do so we have the summary um, saying the process shouldn't run as a route then the motivation behind it the proposal so this kind of goes into it um, for this practice is actually pretty well known in a lot of domains so we're, we're reiterating something that's pretty easy but uh, we specifically chose um, this one because of that and then we tie it into real user stories that could happen so these are these supply chain attacks and how if you run your uh, processes in your cnf as a non-root and have some type of security issue then it could help so we're looking at best practices like that when we're saying um, saying these uh, one other item i think that would be maybe related um, a couple of things i guess references so we send them out to a lot of places i, I don't recall right now but it's possibly the case that the nsa um, guide actually says it so there's i know there's a cubescape test so one of yeah. the things that we do um, with this is we have a test objective section and we're giving some information about um, if, if you're going to follow this best practice and here's some like <laughs> test for it, you can do static analysis, runtime analysis, and that sort of thing. So uh, there we go. So things, things like, you know, uh, 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 saying that uh, you should configure your trust so that the ETCD is is, uh, is, is encrypted. Uh, it, could it be some uh, such a you know of, of, of a best practice? For, this is what kind of the kind of things we are looking for because you know I I because you know I can raise it with you know without you know even blinking I could raise like five uh, five six things like this. Um, I'd love to add them. Um, one yeah. of the, for sure. And so if, if, if you think one is a, a good idea to add, like you're like, no, this is a best practice and I can point you at some places that talk about that, um, then you could just add a new issue. So here's yeah. one that we plan to, um, write up, but we haven't, you know, we haven't done it yet, but we thought this would be a good one. Don't run containers with the privilege flag equals true. So this is yeah. one that Ian put forward. So any that you yeah. think would be good, you can create an issue. If if you want to provide a place to talk about it, um, the the discussion board is a good place for that. Um, okay. Some of these actually have stuff like I'll maybe this one applying principle of least privilege. There's a whole lot of discussions in here, like you can see right here. Here's some best practices. Yeah. No root in container, right. manage access access to the Kubernetes API, no privileges. Um, I think this container should be runtime isolated. Might have been Frederick and Nikolai way back when we were working on a document. Some of these got copied over. But um, feel free to add them any of these places. 
but please okay. raise an issue if if you think no this one's a really good one and it's right here in the nsa guide and it's also here over on the kubernetes box so we we think yeah. that you should add this yeah okay yeah there uh, there's two places you could source material from uh actually i'll double check the second one the first one is the CNCF uh, security tag has a, a white paper that's worth reading through. And if you read through that, ideas should pop out for best practices. The second one, you'll need to double check the license for this because I, I don't know what it's licensed under. Uh, the CIS, as an organization called CIS, has a set of benchmarks that you can follow on how to harden various systems. So they have a, a guide on how to harden Linux and they have a guide on how to harden Kubernetes. So I would recommend if the license is uh, flexible enough to, uh, to also look at that as a, as a source. Uh, don't look at it for this purpose sure. if, if the license is not appropriate, but uh, it, is, it is a resource you can use where <coughs> when you take it to production, that is a fantastic resource you can use to help harden your systems as well. So uh, we could put a point or two in, I, I think would be, would be appropriate uh, at, the, at the very least. And they should cover Add things a link like- to that, Frederick. Um, whenever you get a chance, I just tagged you in the- Sure. I think I used the wrong- Mess wrong one. Yeah, I, I, I will add the ideas today or tomorrow to start this. I don't know which email. I got too many emails for you, Frederick. Yeah, and every time I go somewhere near, they give me another one. Uh, yeah. SIG security white paper, we actually went over that and um, that's definitely a good place that we can keep pulling stuff from. Some of the least practice stuff that we found, had found before also matches right up with what they're saying. So we started to reference that, but that's a good one. And I think Lucina may have dropped it or somebody. I don't know who just dropped that in. All right, is there anything else? And References to places are also uh, very helpful. So if you don't have like a specific idea or area, then a reference to a set of ideas or potential ideas, content would be great. Yeah, I just took a look. Their licenses, they use a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share alike. So that may be problematic. The non-commercial may be problematic to some people, perhaps. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder how that would work. Yeah, they, they want people to sign up to their service and, and pay for their, uh, for their reports for commercial usage. So that's, yeah. the, uh, that's the business model they're aiming for. All right, well, we can take a look. Thanks, Victor. It, it is that link that you were talking about before, or just funny? Um, oh. Is this the the NSA um, CISA hardening guide? No, this is a different one. No, uh, we were referring to the NSA CISA. Kubernetes hardening guide or something like that. Um, I don't remember the exact long name, but that's this is a good one. That's a great one. Let's see if I can copy this. Oh, great. Um, 
I posted a link to the uh, press release for the Kubernetes targeting targeting guidance. Uh, yeah, that's the one I was referring to. Uh, let's see, Kubernetes. And you got to keep clicking through and eventually you'll get there. There it is. All right. All right, anything else around best practice ideas or thoughts? All right. Um, looking through the end of the year uh, schedule. I think we are on for the next week, um, the 6th of December, 13th. Twentieth, twenty seventh. Um, all right. I guess we'll figure out who's available for these. I'm personally going to be off a little bit of the time at the towards the end of the year, but um, I guess we can see who else is going to be around. What What about the maybe the twenty seventh and the third? Both are kind of right on on some holidays within days of holidays yeah just skip those does anyone want to be here on the 27th or 3rd where they're like no i'm going to be here so keep it going and i'll help make it happen I will not be here on the 27th and 3rd for sure. I don't know what Ian's doing, but he may step up to lead. I think I'm going to mark them as um, maybe cancel. If there's no objections, then I'll keep it like that. Check back. Um, next week with folks and Ian and and see how that goes. All right. Um, anything else? Otherwise, give everyone twenty minutes. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day and see you next week. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.